Welcome to the Middle Room Workshop. Today, I'm going to review the future of laser engravers, the WeCreate Vision 20 volt laser engraver. Without further ado, let's get into it. This is a new brand entering the market. And this brand, this machine is set to change the way we see and look at laser engravers. The brand wanted to make lasers as easy, safe, and accessible to everyone, and I believe that they have nailed it. The first model is called Vision, and I have to say that their vision is right. I'm truly impressed about the ease of use and its performance. This is a class one fully enclosed industrial grade desktop laser engraver. It has a stunning and minimalistic design with a pleasing and functional look with a bunch of interesting features, including hair assist with onboard control, mobile app offline control, and what sets this machine apart, an enclosure with extraction and onboard camera in a really exciting focusing system. The working area is about 420 times 290 millimeters, but it can take material up to 475 times 318 millimeters. Now, before getting any further, a quick note, I received this machine free of charge with a request to review it. However, I'm not being paid by WeCreate or any one of its affiliate. And as usual, you know that I like to keep my video reviews unbiased. Therefore, all of the opinion that you are about to hear in this video review represent my honest opinion about this machine. And as a such, I will also tell you what I like, what I don't like, and what I think it should be improved. As usual, I break down my video reviews into different sections so that I can try and cover most aspects of this machine. Therefore, have a look to the timeline below and jump to the section of your interest as you please. Starting with the assembly, the machine comes ready to go. No assembly required. All you need is to install the cutting bed and slide in the dirt collection tray on the bottom. Now, the box is massive and you might want an extra pair of hands just to extract the machine from the box. After that, you will need to make sure to remove all the components and the foaming from the inside. To install the bed, you will need to power the machine for the first time so that the machine rises up out of transport mode and clears the space for it. The connections are located on the back side where you have power, data, air, and extraction, except for the rotary connection, which is located in the inside. It takes no more than 10 minutes to open the box, install the software, and launch your first project. And if you're wondering about your first project, you will be welcomed in the Make It Up with many free projects ready to go. The machine has a minimalistic and elegant design with a futuristic appearance and merges nicely in an office environment. The fully enclosed design and built-in extraction system makes it a great choice for creators and hobbyists who want a nestle-free laser engraver. I can imagine this bang on the desk of an architect who creates a scaled model for its client. The frame is entirely custom designed and enclosed on a fire retardant metal shell. It uses steel rails and rollers for the movement. The wiring and hair hose are nicely routed on drag chains and the air connection to the laser module is done through a flexible hose. The machine is stiff and squared out of the box. The machine comes with a lot of features, way more than what we normally see with laser engravers in the market. Starting with a built-in air assist with onboard control, which allow you to make link cuts from your first project. The pump is a typical air pump and it's both quiet and effective. A mobile app controller which allow you to work offline without a PC connection. All you need to do is to prepare your file, then you can send the file to the machine which stores it onto an onboard memory and you only need to click the button on the front of the machine to start your project. A full metal enclosure with eye protective glass which makes it a class 1 laser engraver which is both safe and does not require goggles. Built-in fumes extraction with an onboard control for clean and smell-free operation and is also quiet. Built-in alignment camera, which makes placing and aligning your projects very easy. The camera is a 12 megapixel high resolution camera and its alignment precision is great. With it, you will be able to drop in anything, including scrap pieces of material then move, scale, and rotate the project within the software. An aluminum bed with blades and dirt collection tray, which allow you to easily clean the machine. 
The key features of this machine and the reason why I believe many of you are watching this video is the transforming ability. That is, the machine has a built-in autofocus system with the coolest focusing system ever seen in a laser engraver. Simply drop the material or product onto the bed, place the project onto it and click focus. The laser moves onto position and the entire machine lowers down until it senses the material. Easy to use roller attachment, and a bunch of safety features. The machine comes with a free proprietary software called Make It, available for most platforms, which is capable and simple to use. You can do simple design and import raster image and vectors of several formats. Plus, you get access to a library of projects ready to cut. The library is free for the first six months. The layering system is decent and allow you to work on more complex multi-power projects with engraving and cutting without any problems. A cool feature about the software is the ability to visually select the fill engraving darkness from their material library. If you still want to use LiveBarn to take advantage of its advanced layering system and other functions, you can do so, but not directly. You'll need to follow a simple workflow. First up, you'll need to import the machine settings, which can be downloaded from the WeCreate website into LiveBarn. Then create and prepare your projects with its layering. Once you're done with that, move the project to the correct coordinate system. Now, if the material cannot be moved on the bed, which means it's constrained, you can read the coordinate from the Make It tab. Once done, save to G-code, making sure to be in absolute coordinate system. Now you can import the G-code file in the Make It tab where you can preview and start your project. Unfortunately, with the G-code, you lose the ability to reposition your projects and the autofocus. Therefore, if the position is not okay, you might want to move the material by hand, then refresh the camera, re-import the file, check its preview, and once all is good, you can finally start. Now, when you click start, the file is actually sent to the machine, which stores it in its onboard memory, which then waits for you to click the only physical button on the front of the machine in order to execute it. The machine comes with a highly sophisticated quad diode 20 watt laser module with a touchless autofocus sensor built in. It looks nice and it is compact. The module mounts directly on a stiff bracket to the x-axis trolley. The focusing system is automated. With this machine, we finally see the true application of the z-axis in a desktop laser engraver. There is no need of setup or programming uh, in order to use the focus. The focus is as easy as it can get. Just click the focus button in the software and the machine does the rest. As for the accessories, the machine comes with two large testing sheets and two sample engraving. If you opt for the rotary version, you also get the rotary chuck with a tail roller, which is suitable for most projects. Speaking of which, the roller is very simple to install and operate. Now to use the roller, remove the bed, fix the attachment on the dedicated location on the left of the machine and connect the wiring directly inside of the machine. After installation, Chuck in your cylindrical object like a cap or tumble and measure either its diameter or perimeter, whichever is easier. In the software, you will need to switch to roller mode, input the perimeter or diameter of the product, then design or upload your design, position it, and you're ready to go. Let's now get into the capabilities. As usual, I run my testing in order to assess the performance of the machine using the most commonly used material. And for the test, I run the machine with the air pump that comes with it so that you know exactly what to expect. Going ahead with the testing, cutting three millimeters or one eighth of an inch birch plywood cleanly at 550 millimeters per minute, 95% power. Now you could go as fast as 650 to 700 millimeters per minute, but you would end up with stringing on the backside. This may leave your part with rough edges. Therefore, I would considerably go no more than 500 millimeters per minute, 95% power, or even drop down at 450 millimeters per minute for a good and consistent result each time. Then six millimeter birch plywood, 250 millimeters per minute, 95% power. Three millimeters laminated HDF, good results at 550 millimeters per minute, 95% power, with rougher results at 600, 650 millimeters per minute. 3.2 mm acrylic, one pass at 300 mm per minute, 90% power, with a very smooth edge finishing. 
1.5 millimeters ABS, it maxed out my testing at 1200 millimeters per minute, 90% power in a single pass. 3 millimeters paperboard, the same material used in food packaging, it was able to go through at 600 millimeters per minute, 90% power, with rougher results at 700 750 millimeters per minute. As for the maximum depth, at standard focus height, I was able to go about 90 millimeters into pine wood in three passes at two millimeters per second or 120 millimeters per minute, 100% power. Unfortunately, you cannot go uh, lower than the standard focusing height. Uh, the only way to manually set the focus height is to work with G-code where you can uh, input the material thickness. Therefore, you could account for a lower thickness in order to allow the uh, laser to sink a little bit more. I also ran a fit test to find the curve value to get that nice interference fit which allow part to stack together without any glue. And on a 3 mm laminated HDF, the average curve value for vertical and horizontal slots is about minus 0.125 mm with an even tighter fit at minus 0.15 mm. For the engraving performance, on birch plywood, as you can see, produces good results all the way up to machine's top speed of 36,000 mm per minute. So you simply need to choose the color tone you like and to go for it. I particularly like the darkness of the engraving as compared to other 20 baht laser engravers, which usually yield to a more brownish result. On MDF, you get similar results, which visible engravings at machine's top speed. I then tackle some projects which turn out very good with consistent cuttings and engravings without any sign of power drops. All right, let me now tell you what I like, what I don't like, and what I think it should be improved. Starting with the pros. Full enclosure with extraction system built in, lightning, and a high protection glass which makes this laser as safe as it can get. Built in air assist with onboard control, Really cool the axis movement, which together with a touchless autofocus system makes focusing hassle free and the easiest it can get. Built in high definition alignment camera, which allow you to not worry about material positioning. Functional and easy to use desktop and mobile app. Good cutting bed and dirt collection tray for easy cleaning. Functional and easy to use roller attachment. The list could go on, but these are really the best thing of this machine. Lastly, uh, it's worth mentioning the price, which is great considering what you get. I mean, the machine is a little bit more expensive than other 20 watt laser engravers, but you get a well-made and all-in-one package and it's absolutely worth it. Now, what I think it should be improved, it would be very nice uh, to have the machine seamlessly working with all its functionality with light burn. That will make it an even better machine. What I don't like, the machine size is good enough for most projects. However, it would have been nice to see at least the minimum standard working dimension of 400 times 100 millimeter. In addition, the lack of pass-through means that you will need to cut the material to size in order to fit in. Finally, it would be great if you could get the option to move and reposition your projects as a G-code once you import them. So I know that this is something that could be improved, but it is going to be a cons for me right now. All right, let me now tell you whether you should buy it, consider it, or discard it. Right up, I have to say, I'm in love with this machine. The machine has everything you need and everything I would have want when I started out. The easy of use with its precision camera alignment and the autofocus system makes it top. The enclosure with a smoke extraction, air assist, and the 20 watt laser module, which is the perfect power for both engraving and cutting, together with the free and capable software, makes this machine perfect for everyone. Now, the software consideration I gave you earlier with the limitation compared to Light Barn do not really apply to everyone because the Make It software would most likely be all you need. Now, seasoned hobbyists like me, which already use Light Burn, might feel the Make It Up a little bit of a constraint, a little bit of a downgrade. However, if you still prefer to work with Light Burn, the workflow, it is not that bad. And I believe that this is something that uh, we create can upgrade, can improve in the future. 
Now, after all of this, I believe that my verdict is self-explanatory. I would definitely buy this machine. All right, this is pretty much all. Now, I hope you found this video helpful, informative. If you have any comment, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, the thumb up button below. And do not forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one. Ciao for now.